Hey, history buffs, imagine a world where ships could almost fly. Intrigued? Let's rewind to the spring of 1969. The US Navy was testing something revolutionary, a ship that could lift itself out of the water. This wasn't just a cool party trick, it allowed the ship to move at incredible speeds, handle rough seas, and outmaneuver its enemies. Why was this necessary? Well, around 60 years ago, the Navy had a big problem. The Soviet Union's new submarines were fast, like really fast. These subs could cruise at 41 knots underwater, outrun torpedoes and dive so deep, they were almost impossible to catch. They could stalk American ships and strike without warning. The Navy's sonar could detect these submarines, but catching them was a different story. Into hydrofoils, a concept dating back to 1906, when an Italian engineer used underwater wings or foils to lift a boat out of the water, reducing drag and boosting speed. Alexander Graham Bell later improved on this design. By the 1950s, commercial hydrofoils were a thing, but they were only good for calm waters, so the Navy wasn't interested. Most hydrofoils skimmed the surface, making them stable but vulnerable to waves. Another design had foils completely underwater, which allowed smooth sailing even in rough seas. The trick was keeping the ship level, a problem that wasn't solved until the 1960s with new tech. The Navy saw the potential. Ocean-going hydrofoils could chase down those pesky Soviet subs, perfect for anti-submarine warfare. This led to the creation of the Plainview, the Navy's fourth hydrofoil, built to test large hydrofoils. By 1970, the Navy had four prototype hydrofoils with the USS High Point and Plainview being the largest. They were even testing designs for bigger ships that could carry helicopters. For the Navy, hydrofoils were a game changer, blending ship and aircraft technologies. Plainview had diesel engines for cruising and jet engines for high speed. When speed was needed, the foils were lowered, the jet engines kicked in, and the ship could reach over 50 knots. The foils were controlled automatically, like an airplane's autopilot, keeping the ship level even in 10-foot waves. Plainview paved the way, but it wasn't smooth sailing. Designed in 1961, built in 1963, launched in 1965, it faced delays and problems. Strikes delayed high-speed tests until 1968. By 1969, it was behind schedule and over budget. The Navy took over, but had to spread resources across four prototypes, slowing progress. In 1974, Plainview got a major overhaul with a better hydraulic system and digital autopilot. It became more capable, but the Navy was losing patience. Hydrofoils had lighter, weaker aluminum hulls, less armor, complex systems, and high maintenance. Aircraft had become better at hunting subs, making hydrofoils less appealing. The Navy built a smaller hydrofoil class, the Pegasus PHM-1, for coastal patrols, but plans for 44 ships were cut to just six, which were retired after 10 years due to high costs and limited use. By 1978, funding was cut, ending further projects. In the tech-crazed 1960s, many believed in fast travel dreams, including supersonic airliners. In my next project, I'll dive into why mass supersonic air travel never took off. Stay tuned.